I'd like to introduce you all to a couple of seemingly ordinary people doing some pretty extraordinary stuff on the other side of the world. The first person I'd like to introduce you to is Lakshmi Rani. She lives in a village outside of Calcutta in eastern India. She got married and had children at a really young age, and her education was halted before she could even finish primary school. She was born and raised into a very low-class, poor family, none of which ever attended even high school. However, despite her upbringing and disadvantages, she had a really deep desire to help herself and the women of her community. A couple years ago, a local women's organization came to her village to teach them about basic mobile internet skills. Lakshmi took this as the opportunity she had been waiting for to change her life. When she found out that a smartphone holds all the information to the world at the tip of her fingers, she was astounded. She thought the internet was for listening to music and maybe looking up pictures, and she thought that you could only do this on a computer. When she told her husband about the program that came to India in, their, in her village, he was very supportive and encouraging. The other, other men in her village, however, were a little apprehensive because they were unsure of what the internet might bring to the village and potentially change the social culture and landscape. The women, on the other hand, were interested, but they didn't even know how to hold a cell phone, let alone use one. Lakshmi decided to start small. So she started with teaching them really simple and very important skills, like how to take a selfie, and looking up recipes that they could cook meals for their family with. After she got the gist of it and learned the basics, she started training and teaching other members of her village. She used the information she had at her hand to extract information on infrastructure, farming, and agriculture technology to impart upon her village. She even used it to look up new stitching patterns for the neighboring village's women so they could amplify their own careers in their studios and salons. One of her proudest moments came when she was able to stop an incidence of child marriage. She pulled up information on her smartphone about the government laws on child marriage and the information on how it's very damaging and harmful for the girl. And she brought it to the girl's parents, and she stopped it. She's now 23, and she hopes to learn how to use a laptop. The second person I'd like to introduce you to is Parvati Kushwad. She is also from a village, but on the western side of India, outside of a state called Rajasthan. She, got, she, like Lakshmi, got married at a very young age, but she was able to go to school for a couple of years because her husband allowed her to. But once she had children, she was required to stay at home and, of course, take care of the household and manage it. She also had a very deep driving passion and desire to do more for the greater good and for her community and to build a better quality of life for herself and for her community members. When the same women's federation that Lakshmi was a part of came to her village, she also realized this as a great opportunity to do something for the greater good. She learned basic mobile internet skills as well. Very basic things, also like taking selfies, looking up recipes, but also how to navigate the Google search app through voice. She realized that a lot of the women in her village, as with many villages in India, have very poor literacy rates. So reading and writing or typing into Google search is not an option for them. One of the skills that was imparted upon her that she shared with her community was how to search by voice. One of her proudest moments came from helping a disabled couple in her community learn how to look up information on how to use this abundance of clay they had to build pots and pans and regular household things that they could sell. And they were able to have and build a sustainable income because of it. With the information and power in her hands, Parvati says she has nothing to fear. The stories of these two women aren't exactly new. 
It's a narrative we've heard of, and they arise from women who are born and raised in third world countries. They get married, they have kids at a very young age, school and education becomes no longer part of the picture, or maybe it never even was to begin with. There's an inaccessibility to information and technology, and that information and technology is the type of information and technology that they need to thrive and grow. Their growth becomes stunted, and they become sucked in to this way of life. However, these two women, along with thousands of others, are changing that narrative. And that tired old narrative of getting married at a young age and having children and never opening up a book and not learning is no longer the case for a lot of women in one of the fastest growing democracies and economies in the world, and one of the largest ones too. And it's all happening through this really small program that launched back in July of 2015 called Internet Sati. So in Hindi, Sati means friend or companion. So get it, Internet Sati, making it a positive thing. We're all friends, we're gonna use it for the greater good. So these women are taking the knowledge that they're learning through this group, and again, imparting it to their fellow villagers, and then going into the larger rural community and continuing to impart the wisdom that they're learning. And by wisdom, again, I mean basic mobile internet navigation skills. How to use Google search, how to download an app, how to look up information, how to get the answer to the question that they need. Right now, Internet Sati exists in 100,000 villages in India. It's great that Google is backing this because it provides abundance of resources. So the women who are training in this program and teaching are able to have internet-enabled cell phones, training resources, and the manpower to go and make these initiatives real. Google's goal and Internet Sati's goal is over the next few years to expand this to, from 100,000 to 300,000 villages across India. I'm super excited to be joining for a week-long project at the end of the year to help in that expansion. So let's go back to Google search. These women in India and in rural villages and communities across the globe, they have thought for a long time that the internet is of no value to them because they have this requirement or prerequisite of reading and writing. How is it gonna work for them? It's such an advanced technology. We knew from a previous story that I told that a lot of them didn't even know how to hold a cell phone, let alone use one. Internet Sati is that partner that has helped proliferate that knowledge across these rural areas to show the benefits and daily uses of something as simple as Google search on a phone. As of December 2017, 28% of search queries in India are being conducted by voice. And that's December 2017, so we can imagine how much that has probably grown since then. Hindi voice search queries grew by 400% year over year. And again, that was 2017, so we can imagine with the expansion of groups like Internet Sathi who are going and teaching that that is continuing to expand and grow. This is all spurred by a couple of things. There is the access now to very affordable data plans and cheap cell phones. Two things that, again, had a, a misconception before of this is too advanced and too expensive for me living in a village. Internet Sathi has helped bridge that gap between technology and education and affordability so that information is accessible for everyone. Google's goal is to make the web more inclusive. And one of the ways that they're doing that and one of the most real ways that they're doing that is by bringing down language barriers. Ultimately, their goal is to make the world more inclusive. So how did voice search become so intelligent where it can function in a, such a diverse landscape like India that has so many different languages, so many different dialects, and even within the country, so many different official languages? It's this wonderful thing we always hear about called machine learning, and it's activated in two segments 
The first part is called automatic speech recognition, ASR, and the second is called natural language understanding, NLU. You probably hear a lot of variations of these if you read about it, but it all basically stems up to automatic speech recognition. So the first segment, automatic speech recognition, is really what happens when we process sound and then we understand it. Think about it from a human being perspective, just from a biological perspective. When we hear a sound, our brain processes that sound signal and then it transforms that into something we can understand. A machine does it in pretty much the same way. The natural language understanding part of it gets really fancy and cool. This is where the machine is able to understand the nuances of language and things like accents, dialects, um, grammatical variations, even things like colloquial expressions. One of my favorite examples is, how does Google understand if I'm saying pop in Michigan, Coke in Dallas, and soda in New York, and we're all talking about the same thing? It's because of this amazing machine learning technology that is powering voice search. Google's speech recognition now supports 119 different languages, and 30 were added last year. Nine of those 30 languages were from the Indian subcontinent. So going back to the complexity of India and voice search technology and the languages that exist there, 22 official languages, 13 different scripts, and 720 plus dialects. So you can imagine how complicated it must be to bring a very complex technology into a very complex ecosystem. They use neural machine translation between English and nine widely used Indian languages to make their learning model more powerful. Google Voice Search has been using Hindi and English for a long time by text. They learned that if they train multiple languages at the same time, the intelligence and sophistication of their machine learning becomes more and more accurate. That's great, so the machine can do all of that. But it's up to us to build and provide easily consumable and accessible content for those frameworks. For those of us working in the technology industry, there are three key elements to optimize for and within the voice search framework from a productization standpoint. Think of these as like tactical things that we actually do and that are delivered and you guys see from downloading apps or on the web, it's the end product. So the first thing is network optimization. We live in a 4G, pretty soon to be 5G world that is not the case for the rest of the world at all. 3G actually covers 89% of the world's urban population, and it covers only 29% of the world's rural population. I love the picture of this map that was produced by Facebook that shows the average connection speeds um, and how greatly divided they are between rural and urban areas, and you can see the prevalence of the pink 2G and the yellow 3G and the almost non-existence of the blue color 4G. The second segment of optimization comes with hyper-local discovery. There's this great marketplace in India called the Indus OS App Bazaar. It's the fastest growing regional marketplace because it exists in 12 different languages and it's the world's first regional operating system. They've built it so you don't even need an email address. They use phone numbers. They also don't even take credit cards. You can use mobile carrier billing. They deliver recommendations to you based on your language and location preferences. And on top of all of that, it's a very simple user interface. Third is optimizing for devices. Pretty sure the majority of us in here have fancy iPhones, Samsung Galaxies, Google Pixels. That's also not a reality for the majority of the rest of the world. Facebook launched a version of their app called Facebook Lite specifically to optimize for low-end phones and poor network conditions in India. In just nine months, it hit 100 million monthly active users. Super simple UI, they took out a bunch of code, and it works on a 2G low-end Android phone. As we move into this new frontier of voice-activated technology, 2019 looks very different than what the previous phases of technology and search used to look like. Information is becoming 
so, so readily available, literally at the tip of our fingers. And it's available now for everyone, from the investment banker in Manhattan to the Parvathis and Lakshmis of rural India. So as we work and continue in the technology industry to make products and make them for a global ecosystem, let's think about not just how to optimize for this next billion people, but let's think about how to empower them too. Thank you.